So how did your scheduling go this weekend as far as were you able to get everything in? Was it difficult to schedule and like your, your training, all of that kind of stuff? Yeah. So we got in on Thursday, Thursday, I think I did cardio when we got there and then I did like a little total body pump and then I was committed in my brain to not training the entire weekend. I was, I was okay, okay with that. Okay. Um, it's funny though, Sunday morning, LeBeau did my makeup at seven twenty in the morning. So I, t- I jinxed myself because I texted her the night before and I was like, Hey, if you're running late, let me know. Cause I'm going to go try to get my one hour or 70 minutes of cardio in before I come to you. So if yeah. I'm not in the rush and the gym didn't open till six. So if I have 70 minutes of cardio, so 6 a.m. to 7.10, I had makeup at 7.20. I literally had like 10 minutes to go shower and then sit in oh, the chair. Oh, no. So you're so still I sweating up, when you're sitting in the chair. <laughs> well, I ended up sleeping. I ended oh. up sleeping. So I allowed myself to sleep. And it's funny because she was literally right across the hallway from me. So I, she was 20 minutes late. So I could have got all of my cardio in and things like that. But so I walk over, I got my um, makeup done, and then I went and did uh, 70 minutes of cardio, full glam. Everybody oh probably thought I was a competitor. Like, what the hell is this girl doing? Doing 70 did minutes of cardio right before? Yeah. I, it was nice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so my God. Then I went up to the room, rinsed, and then did my hair, and it all worked out. So, yeah, I, I managed. I got everything done, didn't skip a beat, packed my meals, you know, and yeah. we're down quite a bit of weight, actually. Last time I think we talked, okay. I was like, 121 this morning I was 117.6 so okay so you got through the whole hormonal problem issue thing yeah well actually something that's very interesting is I've been with Jamie obviously for a week and um so Thursday Thursday night we got to Legion's and she's like do you want to come to the steakhouse with us because Mm. my food spoiled on the plane we could smell it it was really bad so as soon as we landed she's like you put that chicken in the trash right now so she knew that I was waiting for like food to be delivered and stuff like that so mm-hmm. we went down to the steakhouse and I was like, sure, just order for me. So she ordered me a filet, a plain baked potato and some asparagus. My weight drops the next morning. So we go again the next night. She's like, do you want to come with? I'm like, if you're my coach, you tell me what yeah. I need. So she's like, come on, let's do it. So we did it again. My weight dropped the next day. Oh, wow. So switching out the protein right now. And I think getting a little bit more fats right now is helping me. Um, yeah. So then I did chicken the two, so I did two nights of filet and then two nights of chicken. And then I'm at her house again. So last night she goes, I want to do filet again. Let's try it. And then I dropped yeah. three pounds last night. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm so, wondering if it has anything to do with, you know, cause steak is a slower digesting um, protein, and all that stuff too. So I wonder if your body just kind of works a little bit harder to get rid of it. You know what I mean? So while it, for you, it's, it's more satiating and all that kind of stuff too, which is nice. Like your body has to work a little harder to, to process it too. You know? Yeah. I could tell my body is wanting something or needing something. I'm like yeah. really, really vascular right now. And I get yeah. this way when my body wants fats mm, or needs okay. fats. So, and my, my vascularity right now, like cannot chill. So I know that <laughs> we're just pushing right now. That's, I just know my body, you know, yeah. and I, I can see like, you know, the vascularity. So I, I know we're, we're right where we're supposed to be. Um, we were at the road to the Olympia last week and we did get feedback from Tyler and Bill that they wanted me to do hurricane next weekend. Um, oh, wow. yeah, they were like, Hey, listen, you're already like so close, like go ahead and get into hurricane. They want me to get some more stage, uh, presence and more stage time. Okay. Yeah. It makes um, sense. So surprise, this is the announcement. I am doing hurricane <laughs> next weekend. <laughs> I feel like we're going to see a lot of that coming up in the next few weeks. Like I started sitting down and I was like, okay, I'm going to start putting together Olympia picks, but I don't really want to do that yet because I feel like in the next like three weeks, we're going to see people coming out and doing shows just to, like you said, to get practice and to warm up and to fix some tweet and tweak some things and just make sure that everything's on point for Olympia. So it's like, I'm kind of sitting back a little bit, like maybe I should just wait another week. Maybe I should wait, and wait another two weeks or something like that. Like before I actually make some, some choices, because we haven't seen a lot of people on stage at all this year at all. Like once, no. once people got qualified, they're out, they're done. <laughs> A lot of the top 10, I think, yeah. hasn't really done a warm up. Um, no. And it will be interesting to see. It, I feel like, in my opinion, Hurricane is either going to be a mini Olympia and stacked, yeah. or yeah. not a lot of people. They're, everybody's just going to show up to the Olympia because mm-hmm. so many people are coming to town that weekend or close to it to True. get here, get settled yeah. for the Olympia, right? So and Phoebe, it's right there in Florida. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Phoebe's already in 
in uh, the Florida on the other coast with Laura Lee. So maybe those yep. two do the show together, or maybe one or you know the other does the show. Uh, Jen hasn't done a warm up show yet. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. It, it, it should be exciting. Nonetheless, I've never done the Hurricane Pro. It's been in my backyard for years. It was actually the first show I ever watched as an amateur okay. person before I ever competed. So um, it, it's it's I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's well, it's, it's situations cool. like that. It's like you, you you it's a no no lose situation, you know, because there's no pressure or anything like that. You're just literally trying some things out to, you know, to, to, to fine tune and just to make sure that you feel good about it. You know, I I've said that a thousand times. Like, I understand why pros want to compete time after time after time. Yes. Because you get you get into this groove of okay, I just got on stage. I know the things I can fix the next time I get on stage. You know what I mean? So yes. it's like I like when I did that last year. I was like, oh, I want to do it again. But I, I, like you have to you have to like train your brain to be like, no, I don't I don't want to do that again because it's not going to help me to do it again. But I really do want to do it again so I can fix things. You know what I mean? And it's just like so I, I understand. Um, why people get addicted to it because it's not even so much about the thrill of being on stage as it is wanting to do better every time you get up there and fix those things that you that you screwed up the first time you know what I mean especially if you're doing it in front of the scene judging panel so for yeah. example but why just like you said there's nothing to lose for me that weekend yeah. I, I only have something to gain yep. um being in front of Bill who's the head Bill Sabella I think as you say his Sibilla, last name. yeah mm -hmm. um he was there at the road to the Olympia and did did the private check-in with Tyler and um yeah and Mm -hmm. and um he's going to be the head judge so of course i'm showing okay. up improved at hurricane yep. from road to the olympia so yep. that is going to be you know, like, oh okay she looks a lot better from the road to you know so it's showing up and constantly showing the judges of seeing judging panel that you're improving does mm -hmm. help your rankings that you're taking the feedback and delivering on it right taking the feedback and delivering on it so yep we'll see it's absolutely fun. well and to that point too it's like if you don't take your feedback and deliver on it. They notice that as well. You know what I mean? Like I've seen that happen. It's like, you can tell these girls have been told to do something different. Maybe it's whether it's, you know, fill out or do this, do that, and they don't do it. And you just slowly see them start to sink in their placings because they're just not paying attention or they're just not listening or whatever it might be. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, we're the judges, we're telling you what to do in order to be better and you're not doing it. Like it's gotta be frustrating as a judge because it's like, you're literally telling them exactly what to do. And they're just like, no, I'm gonna do my own thing instead, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then that athlete's coming up to them after the show again, saying, why yeah. didn't I place better? And it's yeah. like, I can't award you when I keep telling yeah. you the thing and I'm not seeing it, you yep. know? So I'll, the only thing that maybe to get your attention is to keep knocking the placings yep. down. You know? Absolutely. Right. So. You know, and if you're not, if you're not fitting the criteria and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, I mean, you know, that that's, that's just going to happen, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know, and some, some girls just want to get on stage. You get on stage. Like I said, you know, like I had this discussion with one of my pros this past year because she came in, she did two shows, um, her pro debut, and then she did a second show. And in her second show, she ended up placing fourth. Um, and she did, so she did great. It was right behind Romina and right behind, um, Ashlyn and everything like that. It was, uh, what, what was it? The end of the year last year. It was like this time last year, whatever show it was. Atlanta um, Coast. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Um, so she was like, well, I want to do, she's like, cause of my timing, I want to do New York and this, that, the other thing. I said, wait, 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 wait. I said, you know, you just placed top five. I said, and your feedback was you need to grow your upper body in order to balance and like give yourself some more shape and things like that. You can't do that between November and getting on stage again in April or, or May. I was like, you need time. I said, you just placed top five. I was like, you want to keep going with that trend, right? So you got to come back with the, the improved. improved feedback. I said, you, you know, best case scenario, you're going to be the same. Worst case scenario, you're going to be worse. Like there's no, there's no getting better in a couple of months like that. You know what I mean? So assuming the, the peak was grow. perfect, assuming the peak right. was perfect. Yeah. Well, when your feedback is to grow because you're shape, you know, you, that you have to take But time. was she full? Was she flat? Like let's, let's no, she's full. Okay. Yeah, she's yeah, full. That's what I'm saying. Assuming the peak yep. was. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was it. her best look. Yep. And that's mm -hmm. where that's where people, especially, I think, have a hard time with taking time off is when mm -hmm. they're told to grow and they don't. Yes. And you're only putting off the inevitable. That's right. So if, if you're getting told to grow multiple times in a show, it's time to shut it down and start growing. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. And, you know, again, just listening, just listening. You know, because that's the same thing with me. Like we've talked about with my with my prep and stuff like that. Like there was no... 
there was no point in me continuing to compete last year. As much as I wanted to continue to make, you know, changes, and like I said, like fix little things on stage, it didn't make any sense because my overall like driving feedback was you need to grow. You know what I mean? You need more density, you need more muscle. So what's the point of getting on stage again? You know what I yes. mean? Other than other than to say, okay, I fixed this little posing tweak. You know what I mean? Like that's the only thing that would be fixed. Exactly. So it's like there's no point to that. Like I can do that once I've got the size. I can do that once I've got the muscle, but I gotta gotta get off stage and go put the muscle on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the hard part, I think, is for some people, like when they get stuck in that sea of like right in that first call out mix and they're so close, but they're not. And, you right. know, that they're like, OK, but I'm right here. It's like, yeah, but in order to get you from sixth place up to first, you need an off season to get there. You know what I mean? And it's hard to do that when you're so close. You're so close to getting that that qualification or whatever it may be, even if you're an amateur getting into that 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 first call out range is really, really hard when you're that close. Yeah. But it's like, but you know, but if you, if you keep going, you're still just going to be that close. You're not going to get there. You right. Know? Cause you got to think the girls that didn't get the pro card, they're showing up to that next national show too with yep. you. Mm -hmm. So if you were fourth or fifth, the second, third, fourth are also going to that next show. Right. So theoretically everybody should just, that's usually the way the circuit works. You usually see like mm -hmm. the top five girls in that first national show of the year and everybody's kind of traveling together and one gets their pro card and gets picked off and the next one and the next yep. one's right where are you stacked up in that line yep. um but also and you know the, and that's you know my story of when i turned pro is that you know i didn't want to just get my pro card and shut it down i wanted to grow mm -hmm. and earn my pro card and be able to continue that's yeah. the worst. you get something so exciting you got your pro card and then your coach is like all right we're done we're done. Wait, what? I did, I, we're done. I just, I just did this exciting thing, right? Yeah. So yeah. It's all. It's. I guess it's every. You know, different strokes for different folks, and you know, kind of how you want to approach it. But growth, it. There's, there's no way around it. If that's your feedback, time off is key, and it's necessary. And you can't just hope that you're gonna keep showing up, and they're gonna eventually not say don't grow. <laughs> or you're just gonna, you're gonna be the best of what showed up that day. You know what I mean? That's always possible too. It so, is. you know, I mean, that, that, that's like if all of the cards and stars align, but then it's like, okay, so you won because you're the best of the worst. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know what Correct. I mean? Like, right. is, is okay, that right? now what? Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it's like, you know, that it's that concept of like, we talked about with, um, with Yulia when she was on here last week is that she went to the harder show because she wanted to be up against the harder competitors versus going into a show where it's like, okay, I could just walk in and probably win this one, you know? And it, the funny part is, is when you go into those shows like that, where it's like, I think I can win this show and you don't. <laughs> it's like, oops. I've been there. I've been there. I'm, I'm just being honest. I've been there and, yep. and it's, and it's it's good. It's humbling, you know. And when yeah. Julia said that last week, I, I I got goosebumps again when you said it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's that's it, man. You know, and that's that's the type of competitor Julia is, right? Like, I, mm -hmm. she wants to be the best. She wants to be up against the best. She wants to be treated like the best. Meaning, she mm -hmm. wants feedback because she yep. wants to go that route. And and that's the type of athlete I am too. Like, I want to stack up against the best. I don't want to just win a show to win a show. You know, like I right. want to make sure that I'm delivering my best and I want to be up there with those girls one day because that's my goal. That's my that's goal. Right. If somebody's goal is just to get there, to get whatever, then that's a different situation. But person yep. dependent for sure. Well, I'm also using strategies, things like that too, especially like as, a, as an amateur, I talk about this a lot. Like you have to use your uh different assets to your advantage you know like I, I always talk about with me being a, a tall girl it's never a smart idea for me to go into a show where i have to compete against shorter girls in order to win a pro card you know what i mean it's right. just my structure is going to be is going to be a detriment to me so going into a junior usa where usually the the middle classes all win their pro cards is not a smart idea for somebody that's on one of the tall ends or on one of the short ends. It's not, a, it's just not a smart idea to do that. You know, pick and choose your places, go to spots where you have a good idea of what you can do. You know, and again, going to the pro league, that's the same thing goes to like getting in front of different judges and things like that too. Using the feedback that you get to your advantage. Like you said, getting in front of the same judge that you just were in front of at the road to the Olympia, that's an advantage because then you can see if you delivered on your feedback, you know, those kinds of things. So those are, that's all part of strategy that goes into it. And it is very individual, individual, you know, individual, Perfect. individual. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And it, ties, it does tie into our uh, topic today, which is the yes. things we wish we knew, right? Yes. And one of those is I think, hiring a really good coach, you know, yeah. a coach that understands 
all of this that we're talking about, your coach should be the one to help quote unquote manage you and help yes. you find the good shows or help you find the judges that like you and like your look and that you want to deliver that feedback on. That is a huge part of our sport on both the amateur level mm -hmm. and the pro level. Absolutely. But you don't know those things unless you know them. So that's where finding a really good coach can really help you with that. We don't expect you to know those things, especially yeah. if you're new to the sport. But if you find someone that does and that can help educate you, that can bring you from A to B pretty fast if you can yeah. you know, find someone who who knows. Absolutely. So that, that let's go ahead and jump into the topic since we're here. This is our seventh episode. We, we probably, Yay! Said, probably said that like 20 minutes ago, but you know, but no big deal. <laughs> Lucky number seven. <laughs> I know, right? Lucky number seven. Um, we're going to talk about the things that we wish we knew. So um, with that, I think that was one of the biggest things uh, that I wanted to say. Like, Probably things that I have to say are going to be a little bit different than what you do because I came into the sport in 2009. <laughs> so it was a long time ago and there wasn't the resources that we have today. And there wasn't the strategy that we have today. There wasn't the divisions that we have today. You know what I mean? Everything was different back then. So, you know, the, the, the things that I wish I knew were different than probably what you wish you knew kind of thing. Um, so going into the coaching thing, I think that that's a big deal. Um, back when I was first starting, there wasn't coaching was relatively new. There were no teams, you know, um, my first coach that I had was just somebody that I found on bodybuilding.com. And it was just somebody that knew how to diet and train. And that was it. And she, she was, she was decent, but like, honestly, I was being starved. That, that was about it. You know, Me too. That was about it. Yep. I had no idea what, what we were doing strategy wise or anything like that. She didn't even compete in the NPC. She wasn't even in this federation. She was in a different federation. So, um, she didn't know strategy wise, any of that stuff. So, after I worked with her, I ended up uh, signing up with uh, Mike Davies, who is still around. I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but he's out of Ohio. And he was the first, like, original team, right? He was okay. the first original team because he he did all the fitness girls. Um, you know, his current his wife, I don't think she was his, his wife at the time. But anyway, she's, you know, fitness pro, all that kind of stuff. And so it was really, like, that was the first team but i wasn't building really, team yeah like i wasn't part of i wasn't part of a team i didn't feel like i was part of a team like i only trained with them in person one time you know that kind of thing and like all of our check-ins were email they weren't phone calls they weren't anything like that like to the point where the first time that i met him in person he did not recognize me <laughs> and i had won my pro card with him at that point he didn't recognize me in person <laughs> wow can you yeah, imagine i, like, uh, I know i was like mm. I've just been working with you for three years. No Hi, big I'm one of your athletes. You turned know. pro. <laughs> but it was just so different back then because it was just, like I said, email check-ins and pictures and that's it. You know, posing coaches didn't exist. Posing coaches did not exist. Um, I got my posing feedback from going to seminars with Gary Udit. You know, Gary Udit to run wow. this whole area out here. And back then he did his perfect posing clinics all the time. And that's how I got my feedback from posing. I did all the posing myself all of it. And I just got it from, from bodymill.com and watching Aaron Stern and stuff like that, you know, which um, is why you're so great at it now. <laughs> right. I learned all of it the wrong way first. <laughs> I, did it all, I did it all the wrong way first. So, you know, back then, and again, it was just, it just wasn't a thing. Like there was, it was more organized for men than it was for women. You know, um, figure was relatively new still bikini was brand new. Like the first year that I competed was the first year of bikini. So you know, there wasn't such a thing as choosing a coach that would help you strategy wise. That didn't exist. You had to kind of figure it out yourself. So you know, I was, yeah, I was on bodybuilding forums and things like that. There were different, you know, different forums out there. And that's how I figured out what to do, where to go. And I did it all on my, all, all on my own. Um, and really, I mean, it got, when it came down to it, all that Mike Davies really did for me, um, was he just sent me workouts and stuff. And I really kind of did my own thing when it came to workouts. And then I just followed his, his, his diet more than anything else. That was it. So when I think, when I look back at it, I'm like, I really got myself to my pro card by myself. Like wow. I really did, you know, like it wasn't as impressive. Yeah. I'm like, I wouldn't be able to do that today. But again, I, that's, we, we talked about this before. Like, would I be able to get my pro card again? Absolutely. Because there's a thousand more resources out there now than there were back then. That stuff yes. didn't exist. It just didn't exist. Yep. I had a spreadsheet that I did and that was it. Right. You know, I, I mean, I pulled workouts from online. I, you remember, I remember going through Amanda Latona's glute workout once a week 
from bodybuilding.com. That's how I, that's how I work my glutes. So glutes got, once a week. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. a dream. <laughs> well, that was figure too. You got to remember it was figure. So we didn't have glute, we didn't have glute days. You know what that's I mean? True. Sorry. I did a glute yep. day. I did yeah, I did a glute day because I wanted my butt to look like Amanda Latona. That's why I did it. It wasn't because it was in my program. <laughs> it was because I wanted to have a butt like Amanda. Hence, hence why she <laughs> hence why she sold all the glute programs. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, you know, it was one of those things that was like, I just did it because I wanted that. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure. So, you know, the things that I wish that I had back then was like I said, like strategy. Like people don't realize today how <laughs> i feel like the old person it's like you kids today uphill both ways uphill both ways to get right. to, to get to the bodybuilding show <laughs> no i mean it's a good point though i mean you literally had no resources right everything None. was on bodybuilding.com then yep. you know and now uh -huh. there's so much information out there it's almost a little confusing and that's where yeah. a good coach can kind of say this is important. This is not, and listen, coach to coach, everybody has their style of coaching and what works and what doesn't. We've talked about this before. I say it all the time. There's a million ways to skin a cat. As long as the yep. cat gets up on stage, yep. you're going to see a uh, lots of diff different approaches to get there. Um, but it is, it's so interesting to see everyone's different resources and how they do mm -hmm. things. And it's cool. It's and, cause yeah. you didn't have that. No, you know, and, and, and part of me is happy about that. You know what I mean? Like um, and this is not, and again, when I'm saying all this stuff, I'm not saying this to knock my old coach. This is just how things were, you know, this is just how things, how things existed back then, you know? And to that point, uh, it was almost a good thing because I had to figure it out myself. You know, right. I couldn't just rely on somebody and trust them blindly. I had to go figure it out myself. Um, and you know, like you just said, there's a lot of resources online right now, and a lot of them are wrong. You know, a lot of them are really, really, really wrong. And that to me is one of the hardest things I think coming into the sport, because you just don't know who to talk to and who to trust. You don't know who's right. You don't know who's wrong. You don't know who you should be paying attention to and who you shouldn't. You know, um, athletes a lot of times have their own content like we do like this, but they do their own content and stuff like that. And, and so people follow them and follow them blindly. Well, just because they're an athlete doesn't mean they know how to coach you to where you need to be as an athlete. You first know? point, first point, first point of the podcast. <laughs> there you go. Yep. It's it's true. Just because they're good at being an athlete doesn't mean they're going to be good as a coach. And you see this in every other sport. Okay. So like we're big college football fans, right? My husband is a big Alabama football fan, loves Nick Saban, all of that, right? So Nick Saban, he played football, but he is known as one of the greatest college football coaches of all time, right? He wasn't the greatest football player of all time ever. You know what I mean? Coaching and being an athlete are two very different skill sets. And you wouldn't expect Nick Saban to go on, on the field and be the quarterback that day. He just wouldn't do that. that. That's not his thing. His thing is being able to coach these, these kids to where they need to be. So they're two very, very different things. And I think this is the one sport, bodybuilding is the one sport where those things get really intertwined, really intertwined. You don't see that anywhere else. No. Can you think of nope. any other sport where the athlete is coaching other people? Can you think of any other, any other sport? Nope. Nope. Coaches stay in their lanes and athletes stay in theirs in all other sports. Yeah. And that is very frustrating. You know, it's really frustrating to see, um, everyone thinks there's a coach, they're a coach these days. And just mm -hmm. like you're saying, you know, take just a random person in a gym who decides I want to do a bodybuilding show. Well, they look at the girl across the room that they know is an athlete and a coach, yep. right? And that's their only resource or connection for them wanting to do a show to get them into the bodybuilding world. So yep. they go hire that girl. Yep. Well, Drew and I always say all the time as a coach, you have to be an innovator, yeah. not a replicator. Yeah. And 90% of coaches, I would say, who say they're a coach, they're replicators. What does that mean? Yes. That means they're an athlete themselves. They're taking their experience from their coach and what that coach has done with them and just replicating it with clients and charging money for it. Yep. Now, what do you do when that client has a specific issue? They have a gut issue. They have a hormone issue. They have a, a biomechanical issue. You're not going to know how to fix that. Now, what do you do? And mm -hmm. most people don't speak up and say, yep. 
I don't know how to address this. Listen, I have a background in exercise physiology. I waited to become a coach. I did not come a coach up come a coach out the gate. I wanted to make sure I knew in my heart of hearts, I'm dealing with human lives. Mm -hmm. That that's, that's serious to me. Mm -hmm. I want to lay my head down at night and know that every single person on my roster is number one healthy. And that number two, I'm qualified enough to be helping them. And I still have clients present things to me and I'm like, I'm not sure. I mean, my aunt is a physical therapist. I used to run her clinic. I wanted to be a physical therapist before I got into this sport. I have a background in exercise physiology. I have a very good connection with a hormone clinic that I partner with. I know a good amount, but I don't know everything. I can't imagine being where I was just out of college and taking on clients at that time. I still wouldn't have known how to peak an athlete or how to help an athlete. And that's scary to me. So I think the best thing to do is to try to find teams and then Mm -hmm. talk to girls on the teams about their coach or their experience and get feedback. You know, there's other sub things and anonymous threads and Reddit and things like that, that people can feel free to, you know, speak about. Or if you're going on an individual coach, like, like ask that person their background, ask what their Mm -hmm. success is, you know, ask tough questions. If I did get a gut, a gut, issue what would you do right you know come up with those tough questions and you're gonna know right away if that person knows what they're talking about or not (laughs) yeah yeah um you know and and that's and that's unfortunate because like that that i think is happening a lot more now where people have the qualifications which is good but like again when i started that wasn't a thing like you saw there was there were people that would do this they would go and they would hire they would hire the guru of the day right they would hire the kimotos they would hire the whoever take their programs And then just put them together and give them to other clients. Yes. Sometimes they wouldn't even take the names off the top. (laughs) Sometimes they wouldn't even take the name off the top. It's like you do realize that it's got another coach's name on top, right? (laughs) Like it was, it it was bad. It's getting, it's getting better. And again, because there's so much more information out there, so people can do research. So I really encourage people to do research because you can find out things now, right? That you couldn't find out before. That's one good thing about having all this information at your fingertips with the with the internet and all that kind of stuff. You can look up coaches, you can look up protocols, you can look up all their past history and things like that. So that's a good thing. Um, you know, five years ago you couldn't do that. You know, it wasn't it wasn't as plentiful. But even now, there's still I mean, there's still people that just I'm going to be a coach today. So and they and, they, and a lot of times what they'll do too is they'll offer you like free training or something like that so they can get started on their coaching business, blah, blah, blah. You got to understand that when you do that kind of stuff, you literally are putting your life into their hands because it's your health. You know, it's your, it's your health, it's your body at the end of the day. And this sport, I've been doing it for close to 15 years now. You can do this long-term if you're smart about it, but if you're not, it can wreck you real fast. It can wreck you real fast if you're not, if you're not careful. Yeah. You know, I would rather a coach, I was just having this conversation over the weekend with a, with an athlete and we were, we were doing a a consult and I would rather a coach charge me. And then I know I'm getting a coach with a great amount of education and that treats me like everybody else. And I would rather pay at that point. Um, yes. and not to say that, listen, I have a couple of pro bono people on my schedule for whatever reason. I, I, I do believe in giving back, mm-hmm. Yep. but when you keep hearing that a certain coach is going backstage or talking to people and offering coaching for free, that should be concerning to you. Well, um, not only that part of it too, but also the obligation part of it, right? Yeah. Like I had, I did have one trainer that trained me for a while and he did it for free. Um, And he did my diet and stuff like that. He was actually really, really good at the training part, sucked at the diet. (laughs) But what happens is, is that you become, you feel like you're obligated to that person, right? Yes. Yes. And I'm like, so after that, that whole scenario happened, like good, we're still on great terms, all that kind of stuff, which is fantastic, but it could have not gone that way. It could have been really bad. And after that point, I said, I'm never doing that again because I don't want to feel like I'm obligated to stay with somebody because they're giving me their time. You know what I mean? I want to just pay up. So then that way, you know, if I decide that this relationship isn't working, I'm out. 
I don't know. Business you is business. Yeah. Absolutely. You don't owe me anything. I don't owe you anything. We're good. We're straight, you know? Yes. That's so you got to think point. about it that way too. You know, I, I think about that too, when it comes to sponsorships and things like that as well, there's yes. very few companies that I actually align myself with. And the reason why is because I don't want to feel like I'm obligated to anybody. And I also don't want to spread my brand, me, myself too thin. You know, like if I'm hooking up with a new supplement company every week, why are you going to trust my word at that point? I I could not agree more with that. You know, yep. like, yep. I have, I'm trying to think of the sponsors that I even have. Liquid Sunrays, who I've been with since I started competing. I'm a, I'm a, a sponsor athlete of LSR as well. Yep. I have Massage Hope, which again, been with them for like four years as a sponsored athlete. Cool toning, uh, cool contours. Um, again, three three years, three years with them, and that's it. Like, I, I'll 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 tell people like I'd say, listen, I really like this product, I really like this service, or something like that. But I'm not, I'm not affiliated with them, right? You know, yeah. Like that, people ask me about like food prep services all the time and stuff like that. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, I use Mega Fit Meals, but I'm not a, I'm not affiliated. Yeah, you know, because um, that, because what happens in six months to a year? Let's just say right. something happens with Mega Fit Meals. You don't like their food anymore. Right. I say the same thing. People ask me, like, oh, you don't have like that many sponsors because I really don't want to align myself with a company unless I truly, truly, yeah. truly believe and can put my word on that product and that yep. brand. Because at the end of the day, that's that's my word. That's right. Um, so that and and I see uh, girls all the time. They'll you know be in this supplement sponsorship for three months, and then they're making the announcement, "Oh, I left this company. Now I'm with mm -hmm. this one." And they're doing all of this with with certain sponsors. And it's like, okay, so did you really like this company when you yeah. signed up with them? You know, because that's supplements. Here we go yes. again with the human body. You're putting something into your body and telling mm -hmm. someone else to go buy that product. Yep. Do you really believe in that product? Mm -hmm. Tough. Yeah, that's a whole that's a whole other topic, but I mean, it is. you know, it when is. it comes to the coaching and stuff like that, I mean, it's, it's the truth too, because there are a lot of a lot of girls and guys that are that are sponsored by their coach or whatever it might be, and you just gotta be careful of that kind of stuff. If, if it seems like it's too good to be true, somebody's getting something out of it. Somebody, you know, they wouldn't be doing it if they weren't getting something out of it. Somebody, so, wins <laughs> yeah, it's like it's it's be careful. Yes. Like it, nobody's gonna give you nothing for free. Like it just that doesn't work like that. They're getting something for it. You know, yeah, whether it's sure. notoriety or just because I can say that I've got a client in this show or whatever it might be, there is something that they're getting out of it, you know, yes. and sometimes that's not a bad thing. You want it to be like a win-win situation. You know what I mean? But like I said, just be wary of stuff like that. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Absolutely. It probably is. Yeah. So what else, what, what else should we know? What else should we know as a what, things? We uh, know? So how about shape over conditioning or shape and conditioning? As far as your, um, your body, your body should be in, you should have the muscle first or what do you, what do you, well, I think elaborate? people get, to, I think people, uh, amateurs or people, obviously that's what the podcast is about. Everybody who's new to the sport, amateurs yep. or, you know, newbies. I think people get so focused on conditioning that they lose the thought of that. This is a bodybuilding show and that we want to mm -hmm. see shape or judges yeah. want to see shape. You could speak to the, to the judging criteria and whatnot. Sandy says all the time, I'm going to award shape over conditioning any day. Now that doesn't mm -hmm. mean you can't go up to the show out of shape, right? but if there is a girl in a height class or, and they're both been splitting the box and one has more shape and is a little bit softer and one is hard peeled, peel down to the bone. You could see every kind of hamstring, every kind of cord, every kind of separation. The girl that's a softer with shape is going to get picked. It is mm -hmm. not a who's leaner competition. It's yeah. who fits the criteria more. And bikini, remember, is the stepping stone to bodybuilding. So it is supposed to be a very feminine look. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be the smallest look. Um, so I just want girls to understand that, you know, three hours of cardio a day and sub 800 calories is not necessarily yeah. what you have to be doing to get into your first show. There's a lot of context that surrounds us. How much muscle do you have? How much, how's your metabolism? Right. What was your food before starting? However, if you're showing up to the show and you feel like you're split everywhere and that you look like a skeleton, mm -hmm. I would say that that's a red flag and you should be concerned. That and also realize the criteria is, is down the middle. You know what I mean? Like this is not, it's, it's a, it's a bodybuilding show, but it's not a muscle competition. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a overall shape and, and look of condition. I just saw a thread about this actually on Reddit today, 
where um, one of the girls was talking about how one of the overall winners didn't have a lot of muscle. It's like, yeah, but she had the shape. She had the look. It's more than a muscle contest, right? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say that because this is bodybuilding, you know what I mean? But it's more than just muscle. You could have a ton of muscle on your frame. That doesn't mean that you're going to win, right? Could be too Take, much muscle. Correct. Take that over to bodybuilding. Um, you know, perfect example is um, Branch Warren. You know, Branch Warren always did fantastic, but he was just a, a bunch of mass that was conditioned a lot, you know, but that's why he never would win the Mr. Olympia because it's, it's not a just throw a bunch of mass on somebody kind of competition. You know, no. it's a aesthetic competition. You a have silhouette. To have muscle, right. You have to have the muscles in the right places. Yeah. That's the difference, you know, and that, and that, so that carries over, not just in bikini that carries over to every division, just because you're the biggest one on that stage, because you have the most muscle or that you are the leanest or the most conditioned. That doesn't mean you fit the criteria the best. The criteria yeah. is broad. It has a lot of factors to it. So like you said, just coming in super shredded and lean, that's not it. That's not, that's not what you're looking for. That's not what the judges are looking for. So yeah, the three hours of cardio and, you know, like you said, sub 800 calories, and things like that, probably not the best idea in the world. If you're having to do that in order to get in shape, you don't have enough muscle, Correct. <laughs> you know, you yeah. don't have enough shape. You don't have enough size because, you know, if you're trying to win it on conditioning, that probably right. means you need to go grow a little bit, you know, like I said about you back. No clue what happened. <laughs> I, I was hearing you. I know you make I, me edit these things every every week. I'm no sorry. big deal. <laughs> anyway, I mean, no big deal. It's all good. No, but yes, I I think what we can both agree on is um, no extremes, right? No extremes one right. way, no extremes the other way. Trying to right. find kind of the the happy medium of your division. Right, and I will say this too because. Um, I think men and women, as far as judges, look at things a little bit differently because I've spoken to several male judges and male judges do tend to go towards conditioning first. Yes. So I, they've said it straight to me. It's like, I would go with the conditioning. I'm like, I would go with the shape. You know, right. I go with the aesthetic. I go with the, the, like you said, silhouette. I go with the overall shape versus the conditioning. A male judge may look at it differently. This Absolutely. is why this is, this is a subjective sport. This is a subjective sport. So you got to remember that too, just because we're telling you that they're going to go for a shape and then they go for conditioning at another show. Don't come, don't come for us. Yeah. <laughs> You right. Know? Yeah. <laughs> so no, it this is, is a where your coach sport. can help you evaluate your body right. type, your style. Where do you fit? Are you on the more conditioned side? Are you on yep. the more full and the shape side? Okay, then we want to go to this judging panel or this right. judging panel. And that's where a good coach can help you manage that. Yep, that's right. That's right. So, okay. So what's the next next point that you had on here? We had... Um, so this is a really good one. And I hate this question. I'm sure you do too, Sean. Everyone asks all the time. Jordan what is your height and weight and what is your bicep measurement? Okay, yeah. Jordan. Well, I am also five, three and 135 pounds in my off season with an 18 inch bicep. So I'm going to turn pro this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. it does not matter what your, what someone else's height, weight or measurements are, because you can oh. take that exact data and put that on yourself and it looks completely different. 100%. I see this post all the time on other pros. Mm -hmm. Every time I put a question box up and it just irks me because I don't know how that translates to the same thing, how mm -hmm. that looks the same. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end of the day, I just wanted to make it clear that it doesn't matter your favorite bikini pro, whoever you love to follow, when you're asking them what's your height, weight, and your measurements, that doesn't mean if you have the same exact measurements or the same exact data that you're going to look like them. That's right. That's right. No, I, I see that all the time. And I did a whole, I did a whole live feed on this, uh, like a couple of years ago where I collected data from people as far as what their height and their weights were in off season and on stage. And what you see is, is that when you're shorter, the, the heights and weights tend to be relatively close. As you get to the taller ranges, they get further and further apart. All and over the place. reason why, yeah, the reason why is because of proportions. You know, when you're short, you've only got so much space <laughs> and proportions to fill out. When you're taller, you're going to have a big wide range of different weights because of how your body's put together. Um, I've talked about this before. I had a girl that I sponsored for a long time. She doesn't compete anymore, but she's the same height as me, 5'9", 
and she would go on stage about 10 pounds lighter than what I go on stage because her waistline is like this. Yeah. Right. So she yeah. doesn't need as much muscle as I do in order to create the same shape. I have yeah. to be a lot bigger, a lot broader, a lot fuller, all that kind of stuff in order to create the same shape that she has because her waistline is like this. Yeah. Right. So you have to remember, it's not about your, your, your weight, you know, the weight you use weight as a data point, as a data tool. Right. Absolutely. And then everything else is relative to you and you alone. Right. Yeah. Got another girl now. Again, same height as me. She goes on stage about five pounds heavier than I do, yeah. you know, and it's, and it looks great on her, but it's because she's thicker and she has more dense muscle. And again, she has an even thicker waistline than I do. So she has to get broader. She has to get wider. She has to get bigger. It's for all her about that shape. Yes. Yeah. It's all about the shape. It's all about the proportions. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, and then with her, she's actually got a little bit too much muscle in her quads. So she splits sometimes when she walks and things like that with her quads. So it's like she's, but she's so big at the same time that she doesn't want to go to wellness because it'd be too much muscle she has to put on her frame. So again, you got to think about those, those things like your proportions and how you look and how you're put together are completely different than the person standing next to you. And yeah. even if you're the same height. Even if you're standing right next to each other in the same class, it doesn't matter. There was a, my very first national show that I ever went to. I'll never forget this because I, all I wanted was I didn't want to be last. That was my only, that was my only thing. I didn't want to be last. Right. So I'm standing backstage. It was figure and it was junior nationals. I'm standing backstage. <clears throat> I'm looking around me and a girl, a couple of competitors up for me. I'll never forget. She's wearing a gold figure suit. Right. And I, I looked at her. I was like, Oh, well, she's, she's a little thick. I'll at least beat her. Right. <laughs> That's what I thought as I'm standing there. We go on stage and she hits her poses. I was like, shit. <laughs> I was like, she ended up Damn, top she three. looks good. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, never mind. She ended up top three. Um, I can't remember what, where she exactly placed, but I remember she was in the top three. And I was, I was, I was <laughs> second to last call out. I was happy I was not in last. That's all I was happy about. I didn't want to be last. So, but I was happy I didn't take last. But I was like, nope, she she definitely beat me. <laughs> so, you know, even when you're standing backstage, you can't you can't judge that stuff just even on looking at somebody backstage and you just can't until they get out, out there and then boom, the poses hit. It's like, Oh damn. You know? Like, yeah. Yeah. So just trying to even trying to predict what you should look like on stage, even to the point of when you're standing backstage about ready to go on is a really futile fight. It doesn't work. No. <laughs> it doesn't work until somebody's in their poses. You don't know what they look like. Yeah. Yeah, and that's actually one of my points, or if you look on our notes, Sean, the ones that have mm -hmm. the tick mark next to it is actually from a listener that is a first-time competitor. She's prepping okay. right now. For, so she had some really great questions, and a couple of them are about um, comparison, you know, yeah. and what we do mm -hmm. as amateurs. I remember my first show, I was looking up the hashtags of the show, and when yep. the promoter was reposting the girls online, and what are we doing? We're all, you know, looking, yep. is she going to be Ah, damn, she looks good. Or, whoa, I got that one, you know, and it's, it's natural. It's human nature, right? We're in the sport because we are competitive and things like that. However, how do you manage that? You know? And I think it just goes right into your point that you said already of the comparison game really at the end of the day, doesn't matter. I can't tell you guys how many times that I've looked up that a person that I knew was going to be at that show. And I thought to myself, oh, dang, that's going to be a hard one to beat. Yeah. And either they show up and listen, remember, we all do it too. We know our angles on social media. They don't look the same as they do on social media. And you show up to the show and you're like, oh, maybe I do have mm -hmm. that. And gives you a little pep in your step. Or there's girls that just go silent on social media. Have no clue they're showing up, right? You literally never know what's going to happen that day. So how do you get over that comparison game? Number one, stop doing it. It's yes. not helpful to you at all. Yes. It's not going to make you feel better. Like, what does that make you feel like when you find someone online, whether they're showing up that way or not in that moment, that doesn't make you feel good. It makes you feel insecure. So mm -hmm. stop doing it. And I know it's hard. I know that, mm -hmm. but focus, put that, if you put that same energy and attention into your own prep, what could you be doing with your time that you've been scrolling for other competitors that you can maximize your own prep? Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you focus on showing up your best, because literally that's the only thing you have control over. You have no control over that girl's prep or if she's showing up or not, or if she's doing two more reps or not, but that's what you have control over. That's right. So anytime that you want to skip five minutes on cardio or 
eat something off plan or if you have 70 grams of rice and 80 is on the scale and you say F it, those are the moments that you can have control over to beat the person that you're worried about that you found online. Yeah. And then the other part that I do, like if I get into that, that bunny hole of com comparing myself, I think, well, she's probably not doing this. I'm going to go kick my own ass. <laughs> you know, she's probably exactly. up posing. She's probably practicing her posing right now. I need to go do that. You know? Yeah. I'm like, that is one thing. That's how I kick myself. And I'm like, okay, stop, go, go do what you got to do because she's probably doing it. Yeah. You know? But before I won my pro card, I always used to say, what, what would a pro do? You know, yeah. and still as a pro, I do that. Something is so silly. I think I've talked about this before. I hate putting on lotion. I mm -hmm. have to do lotion every day, twice a day, or else my tan doesn't sit. So yeah. the times that I want to skip that second lotion or not want to lotion my skin, I know this is so weird guys, but I just don't like the feeling of lotion. I say to myself, what is another pro doing? They're prepping their <laughs> yep. skin for the Olympia. I'm not going to mm -hmm. skip it. So even as a pro, as an Olympian, I still have to tell myself those yep. things. But it's yep. true. Remember what the competition's doing, but I can't affect them. I can only affect That's me. right. That's right. Yep. Yep, for sure. And, the, and I think that, especially like you said, like now with compares and, st and stuff like that, it's way worse now than it was when I first started. Because like I said, back then it was just MySpace and Bodybuilding.com. That's all we had. <laughs> So it's like, there was no Instagram to be comparing myself to all the time. I say that all the time. Like if that existed back then, I don't know if I would have ever competed because I probably would have gotten so like lost in all of that, that yeah. I, I just probably would have never, never started. You know, I, I like, I think one of the, one of the po points you put on here was about confidence or something like that. How, yeah. How, how did you build that? I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I had plenty of confidence. <laughs> I was like, it was like the ignorance is bliss. I was like, Let's yeah. Go. Let's have fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's funny because I have a different perspective of like, I came into sport and I was not confident at all, but I found yeah. through competing, it built my confidence Yeah. because I was able to take care of myself. And I don't know, like you're a bikini athlete, you're yeah. pretty, you're beautiful. You're taking care of your hair. You're, you know, you're practicing posing more. It makes you just feel so um, empowered and woman. And I don't know, I want to say like the term hear me roar, like it yeah. gave me that self-confidence. And I think that just comes with time and understanding yourself. And we have to remember too, a lot of amateurs are in their mid to late twenties. That's mm -hmm. a really hard age. You're coming yeah. out of school. You're trying to figure out your career. Maybe you're trying to find a spouse or getting married. Like you have a lot of life things that are happening at the end of your twenties. And that when I turned 30, everyone's like, you're going to love your thirties. And I was like, mm -hmm. are you 30s are amazing because you're a yeah. little bit more established at that point. You have things that you can focus on because you're established. Um, so I think that just comes with time and reps um, yeah. as far as, you know, the, the confidence goes of, of being in the sport and, and just getting on stage, stage time, right? That's why pros do more shows, more stage time, more feedback and things like that. And once you get that, that good feedback, of course, we're going to leave a show feeling good and more secure in our decision and a little bit more empowered to go to the gym on Monday and continue or build or whatever that feedback was. And I was like, the, I was the opposite of that. So, you know, growing up, I, I always wanted to be an, ath an athlete and I was in several sports, but I wasn't very good at them. I just kind of sucked. Yeah. Um, but I did a lot of, I did theater. I did um, a lot of acting stuff. I did a lot of modeling stuff. Um, I, I did that all the way through, like from the time I was 19 on, I was doing some sort of modeling. I was doing runway. I was doing whatever. I was in front of the camera all the time. So performing on stage was never a problem for me. That was always something that I always thrived in, but the athletic part of it, that's the part that I struggled with. Not that, not that I struggled going to the gym. I liked going to the gym. I just wasn't very good at that stuff, you know? And I always second guessed myself, like even now, like I go to the gym, I'm like, am I squatting deep enough? Like stuff like that. You know what I mean? So that's kind of why I went into the presentation aspect of the sport, because that's what I was really good at. And what I found was there was a lot of girls and we know this, there's a lot of girls out there that don't know how to do any of that. They don't know how to walk in heels. They don't know how to do their hair. They don't know how to do the makeup. They don't know how to do any of that stuff. They don't know how to present themselves in a feminine way. They don't know how to present themselves at all. Right. right. They just, that's not something that you're taught in school anymore. Like back in the day, you know, they used to go to finishing schools and they taught you how to do all that stuff. You don't learn that stuff anymore. You learn calculus and, you know, algebra. <laughs> yeah. Stuff that you're going to use in the real world, of course. <laughs> so, you know, that's the stuff that you're taught. So <clears throat> when I started in it, um, my confidence came from, I knew how to perform. 
I knew that even if I didn't have the physique, the best physique on stage that day, I was going to pose and perform like I did. And that I won shows that I probably shouldn't have just because I knew how to present myself. Present better. yourself. Hmm? Yeah. I mean, it's Happens the truth. All the time. It's yeah. the truth. I mean, I, I can see it objectively. I'm like, there were girls that had better bodies than me. They just didn't know how to present it. Yeah. Yeah. I see that all the time. The girl with the best physique doesn't know how to present it or pose it. Mm -hmm. And then the girl comes out with a little bit more confidence and stage sass and she just knows her curves and how to work herself. They're yep. naturally drawn to her. You have mm -hmm. to remember guys, like the judges are human, right? Yep. Like they are human. So they don't want to just see someone hit a front pose and it looks boring. Like they might yeah. be attracted to someone just with a little bit more flair, a little bit more confidence, but with a little bit less of the physique. Yep. So it's bring your best physique and bring your best package. Just bring both. And that way, you know, you're rock solid. And yep. that goes to, you know, some of the points of, you know, one of the questions was, what do I specifically, or what was something that we should specifically focus on in prep? You just need to focus on controlling your variables, which we've talked yeah. about on many podcasts. So I'm not going to get too much into this. Focus on what you can control. You're posing, yep. finishing your cardio, executing your plan, making sure you're hitting your macros. That's it. That's your job as an athlete within the four corners of that piece of paper that your coach gives you each week, that's your job. And to check in on time. If you're <laughs> yes, check in on time. That's what I like. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand people that can't check in on time. Like that's the first thing that I do. I'm like, and like we've talked about, you know, check-ins and all that kind of stuff, but I have a whole process I go through. I'm yeah. like, I don't, I don't do that every Thursday. I feel like something's off. Like I don't, yeah. I don't do it. I we're really athletes. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's my, that's my Thursday. Yeah. That's my Thursday. That's what that's I happens. start my day with. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anyway, something yep. that was really important. I, cause I know we're running out of time. So I really wanted to touch on this. And I actually, right before this call, just got off a call with a girl who who's experiencing this. And I wanted to make sure we touched on it today. Okay. The commentary from everyone around you, when you begin this sport, family, yeah. friends, it's tough. Um, yep. something that, I still struggle with being four years into the sport. And I don't know how you feel about that, Sean, but like, I remember when I first started this sport, my family did not want to talk about it. My dad came to my first show. He's like, I'm good seeing your ass on stage one time. I'm good. Like it never has come back to a show since. Um, <sighs> my friends, my friend group from before competing has greatly diminished mm -hmm. and to me, like, you know, people around my gym and stuff, you know, when I'm dieting, people say like, oh, you're getting your skeleton face. So you must be getting ready for a show. Like, and mm -hmm. so girls come to me all the time and they're like, does this ever get better? Like, is it, like, this was so hurtful. My spouse said this, this was so hurtful. My dad said this, like, how do you manage that? So I'm probably not the best person to talk about this because I've always had this issue. Like, like I said, going like growing up, I was always that girl that if there was something outrageous to do, I was going to do it. So like my family kind of knows that already about me. Got it. <laughs> like, you know, like they know I'm going to go do crazy stuff. Like people know I've, I've, I've posed for Playboy and things like that. So when I did that, um, I went to LA for a week and I just was, went out there to just see what was going on. I hooked up with an agent out there. They took me in. I ended up going and, and shooting and stuff like that. So then I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I got to break this to my parents somehow that I'm <laughs> posing. I'm doing this. Posing nude. So I got home and I was like, mom, there's something I need to tell you. And she sat there and she goes, what? You posing for Playboy or something? I was like, <laughs> she goes, <laughs> she just guessed it. So like, your family knows up. you very I was well. like, actually she was like oh shit like so i don't know what i just did my camera i just lost my there we go there you okay. go there so you go. um so yeah so she guessed it so like my mom has seen my playboy layouts and stuff my dad won't look that makes sense right <laughs> my dad won't, won't look at that stuff makes sense yeah. but yeah. so they, they they understand that if it's something crazy i'm probably going to do it you know um so the same thing when it came to bodybuilding and stuff like they never had a problem with it because they know that's just who I am, you know? Sure. Um, and they're going to love me regardless. And yeah, there's little comments like um, food stuff, you know, like I'd go home to see my pa my parents or something. And my dad would be like, well, can't you have a glass of wine? I'm like, no, dad, I can't have a glass of wine. No, I can't. <laughs> you know, he's like, well, could I, you could have some chips, right? I'm like, no, dad, I can't have chips. I'm sorry. You know? Yeah. And even to this day, 
now they now again i've been doing this for almost 15 years right so, so when i go home i'm on macros and so when i'm like on off season i can eat whatever i want you know what yeah. i mean so like i'll go home and my dad will be like can you eat this <laughs> I'm like i'm like yes dad i can eat it now i was like i just can't eat it when i'm like oh, like getting ready for out from my show that's all that's the only time i can't eat it you know yeah so they don't ever it's never been like a judgmental thing ever you know for okay. me um okay it's what been more my, of a supportive thing and like, okay, what can we do? What can't we do kind of thing, you know? And, and that's great. And there's a lot mm -hmm. of families that, um, that are that way for sure. Yeah. I, th I do, I do experience within myself and my own roster and whatnot that the lat it, the latter is more, um, yeah. more often than not, uh, where yeah. people are making comments and, you know, your family, go or family or your spouse or your people around you, whatever they see you go from one extreme because our sport mm -hmm. is so extreme to another. And for most, that's really hard to process, right? So like right. before bodybuilding, if you were someone that went out on the weekends and were drinking and your social scene is more food, alcohol, social related, and now you're in the sport where you can't do any of that, of course, your friends are going yeah. to have a hard time with this. Yeah. And it's, about setting those healthy boundaries. And that's yeah. what I tell my clients all the time. You're going to have to have those tough conversations with your friends and your family about what you're trying to do and what it takes to get there. And the people that truly love you and support you are going to understand, but you have to be prepared that if competing is something that you really want to do really, really in your genuine, you, you, this is what you want. Mm -hmm. They're going to find a way to make it work. And the ones that don't, they're probably going to remove themselves from your, from your life. Well, that's what, that's what I was going to go with, that. with that is that, you know, plus I'm a good, you know, almost 10 years older than you at this point. So as you get older, you, for me anyway, I don't give a shit what people think anymore. You know what I mean? Like either you're going to love me for who I am or bye. See yeah. Ya. You know, like I don't, and you're right. Like most of my friends from when I first started bodybuilding are no longer my friends. Um, I have a few that have stuck around. I mean, I can probably count on less than one hand who have stuck around, you know, and the rest of them are like, I'll say hi on Facebook. You know what I mean? Right. That's it. So yeah. <clears throat> because you become a reflection of what they don't want to see in themselves, you know? So when you Bingo. become something better, they look at you and say, I don't, I don't want to have to get uncomfortable to become better. Right. Yeah. And I mean, this remember, 99% not... of people can't even follow a protein goal. That's right. That's and right. And that makes them look at themselves and go, oh, okay, well, now Jordan is doing, you know, 30 minutes of cardio a day. She's sticking to her macro. She's telling yes. me, no, she can't drink. And I can't even get up and do a walk in the morning. That's right. It makes the That's person right. feel secure. And this goes for everything in life. People are mean when they're projecting what they're feeling themselves. And it's important to remember that, that it's not you. They're just, That's right. they're targeting you and That's they're right. trying to make you knock, you know, and a lot of people too, when they're in prep and they're going out to, you know, eat and bringing their Tupperware and things like that. What does the friend group do? Oh, you can't just have one. You can't just mm -hmm. have a bite of it. Yep. How they're trying to get you to crack because they right. want to like, Oh, I got her to yep. have a glass of wine. I got, you know, right. so remember that. Remember that yep. when you're sitting at that table and people are trying to poke at you, they want to see you deviate from plan. Because, because that's then what that they makes would do them themselves. feel better. Well, it makes them feel better about themselves when you do that. And again, this goes to what we were talking about last, the last time with the camp, campers and climbers thing, it goes back to, they don't want to feel uncomfortable because you are trying to be better at something. You're making them feel uncomfortable yes. of where they are. Right. So the ones that are okay with that, they're going to still ride or die. You know what I mean? But the ones that aren't are going to drop off and you're going to find that happens again, regardless of what you're in, whether it's bodybuilding or running a business or, okay, this happens a lot too. You don't have any kids, right? I don't have any kids. So guess what? Our friends that have kids, all of a sudden they look at us and they say, well, we can't relate to them anymore. We need to go take care of our kids doesn't happen all the time, but it does. It does happen. It does happen. No, it's a great, so, it's a great um, example. It's the same. Yeah, it, it it's is, it's really. the same thing. Yeah. It's the same thing. You start showing, you're showing them in themselves what they don't like about themselves. Yes. And yep. it's easier to just cut you off than it is to face it. Yes. And say, I don't like that but it's okay. I love you anyway, even though I don't like the fact that I can't be like that or whatever it might be, you yeah. know, because there's certain things that you are going to look at them and say, 
I don't like this about myself. They're doing it really well, but I still love you anyway. And I'm still going to be your friend regardless, because that, that that's what friends do. You know, sure. there's, there's very few people that are able to be honest with themselves. Yeah. That are able to and, be honest with themselves. And what's the positive in all this? Bodybuilding has brought me my friends for a lifetime now. That's right. I mean, I am surrounded by such fantastic people <clears throat> that grow me, that grow me professionally, that grow me as an athlete, that understand I'm bringing my Tupperware in, in season and do not say a word about it, who right. appreciate when I'm in off season, I can make my macros work. So yep. now I have my friend group that when I've evolved and now I have my people around me that have evolved and now I've brought in a little bit of my friend group from my past that have chosen to love me and support me in a different way. And my family has now come to terms about six months ago, my dad and I went to coffee and he apologized for not being very present in my bodybuilding yeah. over the last few years. And eventually the people that love you will come around. And yes. it's, 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 it's the first time that it happens to you when someone says something that's really hurtful to you, like a friend or a family member, it's going to hurt. It's going to sting. Mm -hmm. You're going to question whether you want to continue to do this or not. If you should be continuing to do this or not, this is the phone call I just had with the client. Her family accused her of being too selfish because she takes care of herself. Mm -hmm. I said, your family is telling you that you're selfish for dieting. Yep. and exercising. Let's like really break that down. And she was like, wow, that's not selfish. It's like, that's no, right. it's, it's just a them thing. Right. That's um, right. So, and it's, and that's, that was the first comment she's ever heard. Actually, this was the second comment she's ever heard. We had a conversation a few months ago and I said, this will not be the last. Yeah. Here's the second. No. And I just told her on the phone today, this will not be the last. There will well, it's be funny because you look back at like, at like your old Facebook memories and stuff. Like Back, back in the day, you know, Facebook used to be more of like, let's just comment about our daily life. So like I see my memories sometimes and this just popped up the other day where it was like one of my status updates was I just got told that I was obsessed with being thin. Somebody that, that was my that was my status update. I was like, I just got someone, told that someone somebody, said that to you. Somebody said that to me that I was obsessed with being thin. And my my comment underneath that was that no, I'm obsessed with being healthy. <laughs> you know, that was that was the difference. So those comments come and they're going to continue to come. And I guess for me, like I, like I said, like that, and that was probably, you know, 10 years ago when I made that, that little Facebook comment or whatever. Um, but <clears throat> you know, now, like I said, now that I'm in my forties and stuff, I honestly, I'm going to be honest. I don't give a shit. I really Good. don't. I'm like, <laughs> like the I have something I get, to look forward to. Well, yeah, yeah. I, the older I that I get, the less I care, like the less I care. And I, and I'll be honest, like I've said this uh, to a bunch of my girlfriends that are at the same age as me. Once, like once you turn 40, it's that whole concept of the, I just don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> like the ones that are going to be by you are going to be by you. And the ones that aren't, aren't. Yeah. Peace. Well, here, yeah, Have a good being life. vulnerable. I mean, I'm 31. I care what people yeah. think about me. You know, yeah. I do care still. Yeah. And yeah. I'm very um I'm very mindful of how people perceive me and and yeah. how, you know, things like that. And I would love to get to a place where I'm like, this is who I am, you know, but it, it yep. takes time, you know. Yep. Just like you said, you have 10 years mm -hmm. on me through this through being in the competition world so much longer than me. I'm Absolutely. still on that confidence in myself and what I'm yep. presenting and bringing that to people. And is this enough? Is this right? Is this, yep. you know, what I mean? and that just takes reps and it takes time. So it for does. someone who's just starting out, you're just scratching the surface of that. Right. And at, at the end of the day, just realize if this is what you want to be doing and it's healthy, Mm -hmm. then you're going to lay those boundaries. You're going to have to communicate and have tough conversations in the beginning, but it will get better. And yes. the people that aren't supposed to be there in your life supporting you any longer will they weed will themselves be. out and you're going to probably right. be better for it anyways. You absolutely will be. And that's one thing I can say, like, take it from somebody who's been through all of that already. I went through all that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you will be a thousand times better off when you've got, three or four people in your life that you can trust everything with versus 20 people that kind of sort of don't give a shit about you. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just the truth. As you get older, that you'll find that, you know, my, my father-in-law, you know, he's, he's passed away now, but he used to say, if you can count your real friends on one hand, he's like, you've had a very rich life. Successful life. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. And it's, it's just the truth. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I don't wish people ill, Ill will ever. You're going to grow, outgrow people. You're going to grow into people. But you're going to find that the ones that really do care about you are the ones that are going to stick through all of it. They're going to yeah. be there through all of it. And the rest of them, peace. Have a great yeah. life. Yeah. I think that's a good spot. That's a good <laughs> <way to go. laughs>
Because <laughs> I know you got a you got a, um, a client coming up, or you got your own posing session coming up, right? I do. Yeah, fun. I know. I, I gotta go practice. I was practicing my posing today, and I was like, I'm playing with some transitions and stuff. You know, as your body develops you start seeing certain things and I'm just like, Oh, I got to fix that. Oh, I got to change that. So I'm like the whole time I was at the gym today, I was like, I got to play with this. I was like, I need some time to, to figure out. Start getting the ideas. Yes. Yeah, so I was like, That's funny. Like, I got to change thing this. I left today is my own posing practice too. I've done my cardio. I did my training. I still have my posing, but I have to yeah. do my, my girls first. So then I'll take care of me. <laughs> I did my, I did most of my pose this morning, but like I said, I started thinking while I was in the gym and I'm like, Oh, I got to fix some things, you know, like, yeah. Cause that's what I, when I'm in the gym, that's what I do. I review my, my, my video videos from from my posing like when I'm doing cardio so like that I'll be reviewing my videos I'm like oh I gotta fix that oh I gotta do that so yeah. now my, my brain is like I gotta go back I still got more cardio to do too so I still got stuff to do <laughs> <laughs> dang it so I'm like I got my training done I got half of my cardio done I technically got my posing done but I'm gonna pose more so, there you go you got you extra know. credit for today then I get extra credit Credit. I get a gold star. Yeah, gold star. <laughs> I like that. Awesome. Um, so yeah, so I think going forward next week, maybe we can do some Olympia hype. I know we're not going to do um, picks. I'll do picks myself because, you know, with you being in it, <laughs> probably you're probably a little biased about yeah. a few things. <laughs> yeah, probably. But we'll I'll do some like, a- say it again. I'll be a listener. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. I love it. So we'll do some more, like we didn't really get into like user questions and stuff like that, or user questions, listener questions. <laughs> we are both in prep. Everybody excuse us. We are very close to stage. <laughs> <laughs> listener questions. So maybe next week we'll do that. We'll, we'll, we'll create a, like a whole topic based on listener questions and, um, Go into some yeah, we have a hype and stuff like that. We do. We have a bunch that we haven't even gotten to. So um, we'll start collecting more. We'll just do a full episode of we questions. Could, of questions. Honestly. Yeah, I yeah. think that would be good. We could do, like I said, next week we'll do lesser questions. So guys, if you're watching and you're still with us right now, comment, comment and uh, ask questions and we'll do, we'll pull all the best ones and do that all next week. Um, and that's, that's, that's all I got for right now. Yeah. <laughs> That was a good so, hey, I, dro- I dropped a pound. I dropped a pound in my, my check in this last week. So we're, we're good. We're, we're moving. We're rolling. I got another pound That's down right now. Let's hope it stays it. down. We're good. We're good. We're, we're, we're grooving now. Heck yeah. <laughs> moving and grooving. <laughs> All right. Well, I will let you get to your posing session and uh, that's it for episode seven. We're out with this one and then we'll be back again next week with Behind the Bikini. Behind (laughs) dot the dot dot bikini. (laughs) Subscribe. Yeah, do that. Do that. (laughs) Bye.